Lord God is very persistent. And though the devil will have you think that God is quickly a quick to leave you, God, now one of the hardest things it is for God to do is let you go. Lord, God loves you immensely. And he don't want you to perish. Sometimes you have tried to run away. Decided it was going to be it. I did but God wouldn't let you leave. I said, I saw a commercial the other day, and I think it was a Coca-Cola commercial, that everything this guy saw looked like a bottle of Coca-Cola. I saw that. Everything had the shape of a Coca-Cola. Cloud and everything in the buildings. Coca-Cola was on his mind. That's the way you are on God's mind. <laughs> God, I wish somebody would say amen. amen. Mike, when you want to leave, God will say, hold on to you. Hold on to you. Yeah. When the devil doesn't convince you that, you know, I don't want this salvation. When the devil doesn't convince you, you know, I can live like hell and go to heaven anyway. It is God that holds on to you. I know we saying hold on and God's on changing hand and, and, and that's a good way of thinking, but it ain't that our strength is holding God's hand that keeps us. But it's God's hand holding us. Say amen, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. You don't have to say amen if you don't want. Sometimes I look at some of y'all go witness and y'all look at the floor. That is all right in hand. Okay, John chapter 2. In the first part of this chapter, it talks about the first miracle of Jesus Christ. Turning water into wine. But down at the 12th verse, it said, after this he went down to Capernaum. He and his mother and his brother and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews passed over with that hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, doves, and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a storage of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes of money and overthrew the tables. And he said to them that sold doves, take ye these things hence. Take not my father's house for a house of merchandise. And the disciples remember that it was written the zeal of the house has eaten me up. <coughs> In the Old Testament writing, it talks about the passion of Christ. Yeah. I want to talk about the passion and the zeal. The zeal here really could help me. The passion <coughs> of my house, of thy house, God's house, my father's house. We see in, a, in the text Jesus uncharacteristically doing something. Yeah. But not much in the Bible that would show the wrath of Jesus Christ. 
He usually kept his cool most of the time. Kind uh -huh. like Deacon Messiah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of kept his cool most of the time. There wasn't a lot of action that he did in anger. But the passion of God's house overcame him. And he began to act in an uncharacteristic way. He began to, he took him a, something and made a whip out of cords and began to beat people with it. Jesus didn't need to do that. Began to beat people with it and chase them out of the house. Out of the church, out of the temple, and told them that you 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 taking the house of prayer and turning it into a den of thieves. You've taken that which is holy and made something unholy. You've taken a place where people should come and find refuge, and you're bringing it and making it a house of merchandise. I remember not awfully long ago, maybe a couple of years, maybe I preached about the passion. Same message, similar. And it came back into my spirit that there's a not enough passionate Christian. No 